Hello and welcome back to Aubrey Books and Coffee. Please grab your favorite beverage of choice and join me because July is over, everybody. This is the final day of July. Let's hope the final day of some of this heat that we've been having. Let's hope that it gets cooler and much, much better. School's also going to be starting soon. So stay tuned for my TBR game tomorrow, because of course, we're going to have some school settings as well as a fun readathon that I am super excited to be participating in. But more on that tomorrow. For today, let's review some stats real quick. I finished 26 books, or at least attempted to read 26 books. Of course, it surprises nobody to know that my main genre was fantasy for this, uh, this whole month. And then of course, audiobook as being my primary format. That's how I'm able to finish so many. Um, I did end up reading a total of 10,115 pages, and this averages out to about 327 pages per day, so I'm kind of thrilled with that. Also, I end up giving three five stars, seven four stars, 11 three stars, three two stars, no one stars, but I did DNF two books. So knowing what was on my list, let's see if you guys can kind of figure out what rating I gave it as we go. So starting off, I finished as a net galley a book that I received, Yumi and the Nightmare Painter. And I really enjoyed this story. It was a lot of fun. I ended up giving this a three star overall because in, in some places it kind of lagged, but it's really sweet that you have Yumi and you've got the painter and basically they are swapping spirits. <laughs> And so one will wake up all of a sudden in the body of the other. And it's just it's just really kind of interesting. And I really liked the dynamic. I liked the slow burn kind of romance that was happening there and just how the magic wor worked in that world. And it was just very, very beautifully written. I was really impressed with Brandon Sanderson uh, doing this kind of story, which is a bit different and more on the romance than what he normally does in, other, in his other fantasy books. I can't talk today. So I actually really did enjoy this and I do highly recommend it. The reason it was a three star is because it honestly just kind of really lags towards the middle, almost to the end. But there is a very interesting twist at the end that grabbed my attention again, so it didn't go any lower. But a three star is where I'm keeping this one. Then I ended up finishing Solo Leveling Volume 7. I love this series. I gave this a four stars. Um, we're still following our main character, Jin Woo, and he's still based in South Korea. And we have these portals that are opening up all over the world. And he's still leveling up his powers and getting more and more powerful. And it's fantastic. And getting to see these different dungeons that he goes through and the politics of his you know, world is just actually fascinating and really entertaining. And I enjoy it so much. And this did not let down. And there were some actual pretty big reveals going on. So I can't wait to tell you about volume eight when we get to it. Then I finished Wild About You. This was the Once Upon a Book Club book choice and a full review of that, you know what I'm going to say, is available in that video. Feel free to check it out. Just know that I gave it a three stars overall and it's, a, it's based kind of on a reality show like Survivor meets... I don't know, kind of a bachelor situation, um, but it was very, very interesting and entertaining and I had a good time. Then I finished Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone. And just like the title suggests, I knew this would be kind of tongue in cheek at times. I knew there'd be a lot of humor involved with it. It was a very fun ride. This was my book club pick and my kiddos there in the book club, you guys picked well. And for me, everybody's a kid. So <laughs> sorry if I offended anybody. Um, but I am very, very excited that we read this and cannot wait to read the next one, which is something like everybody on this train has murdered somebody or something. And so um, yeah, it just it was really entertaining. The reason it got a four stars instead of a five stars, though, is because some of the reveals that they were giving at the end there felt very technically and so it made me think very much of from a certain point of view and so I was just kind of like really really so for that reason it didn't get the five stars plus it kind of annoyed me at times when he was constantly giving these rules to follow for a mystery he would say things like and that was the last time she would ever do that and oh if he only knew then he wouldn't have done that and kept doing that foreshadowing and after a while it got kind of old 
for me. And I was just kind of like, I, I don't want to know. I kind of want to just go with the story. So that's why I got the four star, but still obviously a fantastic read and I recommend it. And I totally forgot to say this and I hate that I forgot to say this. <laughs> um, after we finish this book and our book club, actually during the whole time that we're reading it, we have one of our members on Discord that has paired puzzles to go with our reads and she does a fabulous job. On Discord, her name is Tiest and oh my goodness, here's a picture right here. It is beautiful. She does a fantastic job and as she's posting her thoughts each week to, for the chapters that we're required to read for that week, she shows us the progress of that puzzle and it is just so much fun. We have such a good time with this. So I highly encourage you to join us anytime that you want. It won't be on Instagram. It's only on the Discord. So links always will be below and on my TBR games, but you're always welcome to join us. It's free. And we just have a great time with that. But I wanted to make sure to give her a shout out because she said I could. And I just love this. I think this is absolutely incredible. Then I finished A Shadow Crown. This is book two in that Halfling Saga. Um, at times it got repetitive. It did kind of fall into the curse of book two for me, which is why it got the three star. However, I have to say there was a good cliffhang cliffhangery ending that's gonna lead us into book three. I am definitely continuing the series and their romance actually developed more in this book and I really enjoyed it. So I'm excited to continue. Then I finished Middle of the Night. I was actually disappointed by this. I gave it a three star because I really, really like Riley Sager's writing style. Um, I went into this expecting it to be a thriller. There's no thrill. There's no <laughs> suspense. There's no real spooky factor. Like the whole premise of the book is spookier than the actual execution of the book. And in fact, at the ending, it felt very anticlimactic to me and just was kind of a letdown overall. Almost gave this a two star. But again, I was not miserable the whole time I was reading it. And again, I love the writing style. So it got the three star, but it's not my favorite by a long shot. Then I finished Five Broken Blades. This one, of course, has been around for a while. It was a book of the month pick for me, and I ended up giving it a three star, and I'm not continuing this series, actually. I loved some of the POVs. Some of those perspectives were amazing, and I love those characters, but then there were several that felt very shallow. They weren't very three-dimensional for me. Um, they didn't feel very well fleshed out, and... They were really boring. And so every time I would switch to their POV, I just was like, do I have to pick this book back up? I was just not happy with it at all. And then at the ending, it, I kept hoping maybe at least the ending will be cliffhangery and amazing and make me dying to pick up the next book. That was not the case at all. I was very disappointed. I was like, this is the ending. We've been leading up for this heist and all these other things. And this is the ending we get. So for me, it was a letdown all around with that. So I gave it the three star and that's all I need to do in this series for sure. Then I finished The Prison Healer. All right, guys, <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the thing. This book was never even on my radar. This book would not have been added to my TBR, except that I had as part of my TBR game that I had to add one that one of you all suggested. So a huge thank you to Hadley Games because this was your suggestion and oh my gosh. I gave this a four star and that's a tentative four star, might be a five star depending on the rest of the series. It was amazing. It started out as a typical prison kind of trope where we have a female lead named Kiva and she's opinionated and strong but also kind of wanting to make everybody happy and so meh on that for initial but then she starts healing people and taking care of this little kid named tip who is just adorable so i was in it for this little kid right and then all of a sudden this this rebellion leader comes in and so she has to heal this rebellion leader and while she's trying to heal her and keep her alive, they say, well, we're going to kill her. And she's like, no, 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 I'll take the trials. And that way we can spare her if I win the trials. Plus, she could win her freedom if she, you know, successfully goes through these trials. And I love me a good trial type situation in a book. So I was all excited about that, too, but still feeling very three star for me. But then you had royals who were all of a sudden helping out, too. So now we're throwing in this whole other, you know, part of it. And so that became more interesting. And so I'm thinking, okay, I don't do half stars, but if I did 3.5, but that's still where I'm at. Y'all, the ending. <laughs> and I know Hadley Games knows, and those of you who've read this know, the ending to this book made me go, what? <laughs> and as soon as I read the ending, I'm like, whoop, 
four star and potentially five star, depending on how this series goes. Like it blew me away. I was so into it. So highly recommend at least this book. Hopefully the rest of the series will be this way as well. Thank you again, Hadley Games. Then I ended up finishing Dread Nation. I've heard a lot about this and I was so kind of nervous because I'm like, what if I don't like it? But I loved it, everybody. Five stars. This is my first five star of the month. It was phenomenal. I'm glad it went to this one. I'm 100% going to be continuing this. I believe it's a duology. Um, I'm absolutely picking the next one up. I loved Jane. It's, it's in a Civil War type era, but you have the dead coming back to life and nobody's listening to Jane. Like this... This lady has it. Like, she is brilliant. She knows exactly what's happening and what's going on and what needs to happen. And nobody's listening to her. That's very frustrating <laughs> for her and for me because I'm like, Jane would be my bestie. Like, I would be by her side the whole time. And I'm just, oh my gosh, it's heartbreaking because, of course, there is the whole slavery issue. And they even have a, a type of little settlement that's supposed to be safe for everybody. But then they start saying horrible things like, well, but if we were to go back to slavery, then God would be happy and the dead would stop rising. I, I don't know. White logic? <laughs> Oh, no, it makes no sense to me either. But it was just one of those situations. And so Jane, unfortunately, doesn't get a say so and has to go to this town and things happen. So I don't want to ruin anything. But suffice to say, Jane is amazing. And I love her. And I hate these other people. <laughs> but it is just so well written. And she's just so sarcastic and funny and intelligent. And um, she's amazing with knives and swords. And yeah, like I, the whole time, I can't think of her name off the top of my head. But in The Walking Dead, Misha, is that her name? I just kept picturing her as well. And it's just, oh my gosh, it is absolutely phenomenal. And I highly, highly encourage you all to pick this up. Next, I finished Atomic Habits. This I gave five stars to. Um, nothing really earth shattering happening in this book, but it gave a lot of interesting ideas and concepts to kind of help with um, creating these new habits or to override some maybe not so great habits that we've made along the way. And one of the ideas they had that I'm definitely taking away from it is going to be the habit stacking. So if there's something you're not crazy about doing, like working out, if you stack it with something you find pleasurable, like a brand new audiobook or song album or something and you only do it during that time it kind of retrains your mind if you will to not be so disappointed about having to jump on that stairmaster or the treadmill or whatever because you know you're going to get that new audiobook or that new music and so it's to kind of help make it a little bit more enjoyable um so i kind of like the ideas again nothing earth shattering but it was very entertaining and it was very well written and especially the audiobook version was super easy to listen to and quick so i do recommend it and that's why i got five stars because i did really think this was fun and enjoyable then i finished the crimson and Fortress. I gave this one three stars. Uh, this is the conclusion to the Ivory Key duology. I love the siblings. They are just, they're banter. <laughs> they're just the absolute best. Um, I gave three stars because even though it was bittersweet and satisfying at the ending, at the time, sometimes it moved very, very slowly, which makes sense. There's a lot of politics in this duology, but I am really glad that I read this and super glad that I was able to finish it. Then I read Cursed Crowns. This is book two in this series. I gave it four stars and I did really, really enjoy my time with Rin and Rose and I enjoyed what they're trying to do to help the kingdoms and actually there's a new kingdom found. I don't want to give away spoilers, um, but it's really good and a war that has to be fought. And of course, there's romance and just all the good fun things. And I really enjoyed it. Um, I can't wait to actually read the conclusion. I think it's out already. So I am looking forward to that. Then I finished To Gaze Upon Wicked Gods. This I gave two stars. It's another net galley. I was disappointed. I went into this having such high hopes for it. It actually started out very beautifully written. I was I was pulled in. I was interested. It starts off with a bang. And then it slows way down, like someone slammed on their brakes, kind of a slowness. And it got kind of repetitive at times. I started getting kind of lost. Um, yeah, I just really wanted to like the character Ruing, but I just, I could not connect. So that's why I gave a two star for that one, unfortunately. Then I finished The Ministry of Time. This one has had so much hype and it was reported to be sci-fi, time traveling meets spy thriller. 
I got none of that. <laughs> none of it. So I gave it a two star. I found it incredibly dull. Um, basically, a woman who works at the Ministry of Time is trying to help a guy from the 1840s get adjusted to modern time and modern slang and all our conveniences and, you know, electronics and stuff that we have now and kind of starts to develop feelings. And it's just mostly that like at the very end like over 200 pages into it you finally get a little bit of action but to me it was not a good payoff it just wasn't worth it to me it was just very boring <laughs> it felt like a really boring version of Kate and Leopold if you've ever seen that movie I actually really enjoyed that movie <laughs> go see it if you haven't but um this just felt like a really boring version of that in my humble opinion then I finished Mistborn now this I gave four stars. I love Brandon Sanderson, obviously. And I am so glad that I read this. And I believe on Kim's channel, we're going to be doing the second book for August. So I'm really excited to continue this series. Um, I enjoyed it, which is why I got the four star. I love the character Vin. She cracks me up. There was an unexpected romance. And it kind of cracks me up because if you've been watching Bridgerton at all, um, there's a scene where in this latest season, one of the sisters is being uh, wooed by a gentleman who who comes in and basically just sits down next to her quietly. Neither talk. They just kind of sit there quietly enjoying the, you know, quiet, just sitting next to each other. And it reminded me of that. There's several scenes in here that reminded me of that exactly. And I think that's absolutely hilarious and spot on perfect. Um, also, as we love books, who brings a book to a ball? Thank you. My kind of guy, too. That's what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, so Vin gets new powers and new friends and kind of a found family, a really cool magic system that was really interesting to learn about. And yeah, I, I'm already invested. I'm already there. I can't wait to continue this saga. Then I finished The Eye of Darkness. Now, this was the next one in the Star Wars universe. And unfortunately, <laughs> I gave it a three star because the writing wasn't terrible. But despite the fact we've got Jedi stuck behind enemy lines, I found this really boring, <laughs> like really boring. I was having to force myself to pick this book up. And that's just me. I just was not jiving with the style, I guess, or the pacing. And so, yeah, I gave it a three star. Probably should have given it a two star, to be honest. But I do love Star Wars. And I do love that we're continuing, you know, what we're doing with the Nihil and everything else. And so I wanted, I wanted to give it a higher star for that. But yeah, it was not great for me. Then I finished Solo Leveling Volume 8. Yay! I get to finally talk about this one. I gave this a five star. Uh, now Jin Wu's sister is in danger, you guys. Like, she's being threatened. It is fantastic. We are seeing some new sides and some, we'll say concerning things about the fact that Jin was able to level up so quickly and so powerfully. And so I'm glad to finally see that because if you get somebody that's just super all powerful, where does it end? You know, so it's nice to kindly see this finally see this kind of balance happening and also a potential romance. So it was really cute. I absolutely loved this one. Then I finished Air. This one was a Net Galley book as well. I gave it four stars. Um, and I'll tell you why it wasn't five in a second, because I love Saba Tahir. So many good books from this author. If you've never read this author, you need to pick them up. If you don't want to invest in a series, then I would highly recommend All My Rage. It's heavy, but it is beautifully written. I would have given that one five stars, but I knew I'd never read it again. And that's my personal ranking, but a four plus 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 star for that book. Book. Highly encourage you to pick it up. As far as this, though, this is the new duology set in the same world as Ember in the Ashes. So make sure you read those four books first before this one, because unlike in The Cruel Prince, where we had the new duology that it just kind of referenced characters, this one actually has characters in it. I can't specify who because it would give away who survives and who doesn't from that original series. But make sure you finish it because there's spoilers galore and a couple Easter eggs. So really important that you finish that series and then go into this new duology. Beautifully written, though, continues. It feels very much like these characters that we know and love from that series. I was never disappointed. The only reason it was a four star instead of five is unfortunately at times because it was so character heavy versus the plot, it felt slow. The pacing just really slowed down, especially when they were out in the desert. It was just very, very slow for me. But that was it. Like when it was popping, it was popping, y'all. Like, I mean, nobody writes like Saba to here. It is fantastic. Highly encourage you guys to pick this up. 
Then I finished between Wrath and Mercy. This was my first Just Why Cup. Um, I really wanted to make sure that I read something from her because she's going to be at a Polycon. Um, I gave it a three stars, and the problem here is about 400 pages too much. It was 765 pages long, and I really think if it was just under 400, this would have been a four or could have even been a five star, and I would have continued the series. Unfortunately, those 400 pages sprinkled throughout just really stretched everything where it was just dialogue, 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 dialogue 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 if you're okay with that you'll love this book I mean you will love this book if you want some actual plot you're gonna be bored out of your ever-loving mind and the whole premise is she's wanting to go rescue her daughter but along the way she stops to put on dresses and have a romance and politics and are you kidding me if it's my kid i'm knocking everybody down to go get her so it just it, it felt like the author was wanting to set stuff up for this series and you have to in some way i totally get that and i enjoy jess wise cup's writing style and I love that this main character has curves. We're not just a stick. I love that too. But oh my gosh, there just really was just 400 pages too long in my book. And otherwise it would have been great, but the pacing was so incredibly slow for that, that I had to give it three star. I am not continuing this series because I have a feeling the others in this series will be about the same way. So <laughs> take that as you will. Then I finished Valor. This is book two following Malice, of course, in that series. I love Corbin. I love the Wolf Storm. I love these characters. They are phenomenal. And of course, we're really amping things up because the third book. And so I'm excited to pick that one up. I did give this three stars. I didn't like it quite as much as I enjoyed Malice, but it's still way up there. And I am excited to continue the series. Then I finished the villain edit. This one I gave three stars. This was my book of the month audio pick. This felt very much like if you were behind the scenes of The Bachelor and got to see things from the contestants viewpoint. It was very entertaining. It was interesting. Uh, at times a little chaotic and crazy. And it makes me wonder, is it really like this? <laughs> this is why I will never go on one of those shows for real. Uh, but it is an enjoyable listen or an enjoyable read. It just wasn't anything earth shattering. So a three star for me. Then I was talking to Katie and I told her that I had a Once Upon a Book Club scratch off. And basically for this scratch off, you have different prompts. And once you fulfill them, you scratch it off, write the name of the, the title of the book and the time and date that you finished it. And then when you complete the entire thing, you send it off to Once Upon a Book Club and they give you a free book. So I like to participate in every year when I can. And so I told Katie, there's one prompt on here. I don't like spoilers. So, so Get ready to plug your ears if you don't want to hear what this prompt is. So it's hard for me to find a book that fulfills the prompt, The Dog Doesn't Die. And so you're good to open your ears now. Um, basically, I said I needed that. And she said, here's the perfect book for that. And it was Alone. And this I gave four stars only because I'm never going to reread it. But it, it's five star quality, everybody. It is so good. It's definitely YA. So don't go into it expecting anything heavier, but it's dystopian kind of feel. Uh, basically, it's a young girl uh, who wakes up and everybody's evacuating the city. And she had lied to her mom saying she was with her dad because they'd been divorced and then she lied to dad and said she was with her mom that way she and her friends could spend the night at their grand her grandparents house because the grandparents were out of town so nobody knows that she unfortunately wasn't with a parent and then the friends all bailed on her because they had other commitments that came up so she's alone <laughs> and now she's having to kind of survive in a town and world where nobody seems to be around and winter's coming and just all kinds of crazy stuff and she goes home and of course her dog's there so that's where she gets to have her dog with her it's it's really sweet it's actually written in verse which is unusual so make sure you're prepared for that but especially if you're listening to it in audiobook format you don't even notice that it feels very much like she's writing in a diary or just kind of talking to you to tell you why she's doing the things she's doing and it's just very entertaining. I love her humor and her wit and she has one smart cookie. And it's just, it was such an enjoyable read. 
The ending at the end, though, I wish hadn't been done the way that it was because it felt very much like you don't have to always explain everything to me. Like, I'm okay sometimes having open-ended and just not knowing why on The Walking Dead the dead came alive. I'm okay not knowing why. I'm okay with it being a big mystery. (laughs) But instead, the author tried to fill it in a little bit why the town had to be evacuated and everything. And um, I was disappointed by the reasoning. But it didn't take away from the love of the rest of the story and what this girl had to go through. So hope you pick it up. I do highly recommend it. It. And it was a nice surprise to my TBR as well. Then I finished The Woman Who Rides Like a Man. This was the next Tamora Pierce one. Alana, Alana, Alana. This girl gets herself in so much trouble. Uh, she goes to the desert and gets captured and has to fight their shaman and ends up killing him. So she becomes the shaman and has to train other kids and stuff. Um, but she gets to see some familiar friends again and a romance blooms and then fizzles. <laughs> All kinds of crazy stuff ensues. I don't want to give away spoilers, but it did kind of have a nice cliffhanger at the end, and I can't wait to pick up the next book in my next month's reading. Last but not least, I finished White Cat. This, and in case I didn't say, I gave Alana three stars. White Cat, I gave two stars. Um, I am disappointed because I love Holly Black. I don't know if this was because it was one of the earlier books or what, It left a lot to be desired for me. It was a whole lot of setup for a very disappointing ending, in my opinion. And I'm not even continuing the series because I didn't like the first one. Probably not going to like book two or anything else. So let me know if you read this one and you did enjoy it, or at least the rest of the series. I right now I'm thinking I'm not going to pick it up. It just isn't wasn't for me. But it was a real short read. So and I wasn't miserable. It was just eh. There's so many good books out there, guys. There's not enough time. Now, in case you were keeping count, that's only 24 books, and I promised you 26. That's because I DNF'd two books. The first one was The Last Picture Show. This was my Trivial Pursuit one. I tried, everybody. I tried. And I know some people said on their um, comments that they really enjoyed this. It just wasn't for me. It felt like a coming-of-age kind of story, but it was very slow, at least in the beginning. And I just, I wasn't jiving with the writing style, so I just went ahead and DNF'd it. again, so many books, not enough time. The second one I DNF'd was City of Stairs. Nothing wrong with this book whatsoever. It is beloved by so many people. I think it has an average of four stars on Goodreads. So feel free to definitely still check it out. For me, it wasn't working. And I'm beginning to think that maybe I just don't jive with the writing style. This is the same author that did The Tainted Cup. That one I enjoyed because I love the whole Sherlock-esque going on with it. But... This one just was boring to me. There was a whole lot of information being thrown at me. And even though there was a murder that had taken place, I found like I really didn't care. (laughs) I know that's horrible. I only made it about 100, 150 pages into it. So maybe if I had stuck it out a little bit longer, it would have picked up. But for me, it was just so boring. I just wasn't getting into it. So I went ahead and DNF'd it for a soft DNF, at least for now. So that's all I've got. The only other thing that I had to say was, of course, I'm continuing my walking of the Oregon Trail. I may never ever, ever make it to Oregon at this pace. (laughs) But I'm still going to keep trying because until I complete these challenges, I'm going to keep doing them. And then once I complete them, I can try something new. So we'll see. We'll see. But I'm really going to have to step it up a little bit in order to make it, aren't I? (laughs) Well, thank you all so much for being here. I appreciate all of you. I have such a good time with you guys. Hope to see you on Fridays every morning, 9 a.m. Eastern time. I do my sprints. You are more than welcome to join. And I hope you guys have a fabulous end of your month. And I will see you tomorrow.